Hello. Welcome. Welcome. So in this series, we've been building this CPU from scratch. In this episode, I'd like to get into having relative jumps rather than absolute jumps. So currently, when we jump, we set the program counter to a value that we get directly from the R bus, which means the instruction encodes the absolute address of that jump. So the issue with having an absolute address for a jump is it limits you to a certain section of memory, depending on how many bits you dedicate to the immediate in the jump instruction. Now you can get around that by having various schemes to extend the immediate bits. But the other issue is that you're hard coding a specific address into your jump instruction. So then if you move the code around, then your code breaks because it's hard coding a specific address and the destination is no longer where it used to be. So relative jumps is generally how most CPUs get around that problem. And it allows you in a single instruction without having to extend the immediate with another instruction, it allows you to access more of a range of memory. So you can either jump forward or backward. So in this processor, we've got a 12-bit immediate for the jump instruction. So that allows us to move 11 bits worth of address either forward or backward. So either positive 11 bits. I don't even know what 11 bits are. Um, let's see, two to the 11. Uh, it allows you to jump either forward two kilobytes or two kilowords really in this processor or backward two kilowords without having to extend the immediate. So that's quite useful. So that's what we're gonna do in this episode. First, I'd like to cover some of the changes I did between episodes. The first one is I have expanded and fixed all of the tests. So if I run all of the tests, we now have a nice test suite. So there's more test cases in here, including the logical operations that we just added. The other thing that I wanted to do was in the FPGA version of the processor, you can see here how this display is quite a lot more readable than the current display we have. So you, you can see here how the instruction is kind of in the same format as you would when you're entering in the program, basically disassembles the instruction. So I find this display a lot more intuitive, plus we've got what's happening in the execute unit here. And I'd like to have this display also here. So uh, I did that work off camera, so I will switch to that code. Okay, so this is what it now looks like. So you can see the disassembly of the instruction is right here. You can see that this is adding R0 to R0, whereas it was definitely not clear that's what was happening before. You can see that it is adding 512 to 512, which the result is 1024, and that's going into R0. So when we step, then you can see R0 becomes 1024, and it does, and that continues. And I also added in just some test code for the logical operations, just so that I could see what the display looked like. I think this is fairly close to an ampersand. Uh, this is OR, so not ideal, but not bad either. This is XOR. Um, I have some ideas how I could improve this. I just kind of put a caret down here, but you could probably build a caret out of like up here somewhere maybe, or over here. I don't know. So I might think about this some more. I suppose also I could just use ticks and build the caret uh, out of two character cells, I suppose. I don't know. I don't know what a better symbol for XOR is. There might be one. But anyway, this works well enough. You can tell that it's an XOR right here. So, I mean, I'm not going to spend too much time on it. And subtract, of course. And we've got our moves. And now we're getting into the Fibonacci sequence. So you can see that it's skipping here but otherwise it would jump 
the PC to 18. So in this episode, we're going to be moving to relative jumps. Right now, the jump instruction doesn't use the ALU at all, which is why this display is completely blank. At the end of this episode, this display should work properly for jump instructions. So that's the change that I made there. The other thing that I wanted to improve was this circuit is kind of a mess, and I kind of left it in a mess at the end of the previous episode. So this here is basically a multiplexer that I'm, I'm doing. So it would be good to convert that to a multiplexer, and then it would be good to kind of just clean this up. Okay, here it is all cleaned up. So I managed to get it not to be microscopic when it first opens. <laughs> Uh, this has been replaced with a multiplexer. I wanted to keep the names, so I just kind of split it with tunnels so it's a little bit more readable. And of course, the uh, overflow flag is still being calculated over here. So that's all of the changes in here. So let's move along to the meat of this episode and let's implement relative jumps. Let's see, how do we add relative jumps? Well, the best way to do that is to start with not taking this off of the R bus. Oh. Uh, I'm just going to move this tunnel. And then we've got the result bus down here. And I think since we already have a tunnel for it, I'm going to just use that. I don't know, should I use a tunnel? The nice thing about having wires is it kind of highlights that there is a result from way over here going all the way back to the beginning. And it's nice to see that. Or as a control signal like skip, for example, I feel like can probably just be tunnel. Yeah, I want to see all of the buses proper instead of tunneling them. So I'm going to clean this up a little bit. Hmm. Hmm. I think move all of this down. Oh, that's result. Hmm. If I put it at the top. Then I can probably move this up here. Okay, so everything should be broken. Just to verify, yes. Jumps are failing. Um, yeah, good chunk of, well, yeah. We should have lots of failures in our test suite now. So what we need to do is somehow get the program counter onto a bus. Currently the program counter just goes here and it doesn't really do anything. So it goes on the left bus. How do we know it's a jump? Hmm. Well, it's a jump if it's an M12. So phone will be there. Hmm. Well. Okay. Hmm, that might be interesting. What well, breaks when we do that? Result is 16, yeah. Move this, yep. For now, I'm just gonna... Well, actually, I'm gonna not put that there. I will put it here, though. Okay, that works, but uh, yeah, no, I don't need this. Uh, what? 
Okay. And of course, tons of things fail now, but that's to be expected. Uh, this all seems to work. Okay, great. Okay, so with relative jumps, what we need is a bit of microcode changes. And the other thing we need to do is change our CPU def. Okay, so microcode jumps are now additions. I think that's it. Then in our CPU def, jumps are now relative. So uh, I think it's something like that. And we've got some test cases to tell us if we got the order of these backwards. But let me think here. We want this to be positive if we're jumping forward. So value is, yeah, we do have it backwards. So value will be greater than PC. So we want this to be a positive number if we're jumping forward. And this is going to be interesting because this is not, hmm, this should be an absolute jump. Hmm. Well, this will be broken. I don't think I'm currently using this or even have a test for it, so I'm not going to worry about it right now. I'm just going to add a note. Uh, and that's not how you denote a comment here. Oops. All right. I believe that's what we need to do. Right. Jump test, I think. Jump PC 9. So it's jumping to 10. Uh, so this is actually some negative number. Okay. Uh oh, we got an error. Okay, that's not working correctly. Probably we have an off by one error, is my guess. And most likely it's right here, because PC is one ahead of what it should be, and it might actually be a minus two. Oh, no, we're still erring. Hmm. Yeah. Hmm. So jump PC eight, nine plus one. So it's going to nine. What, where is it supposed to be going? Uh, let's open our jump. As I'm here. Okay, so it's supposed to jump to one. So this is zero, one, two, eight, nine. It should jump to nine. So nine seems correct. And then in this case, it should jump to two, which is six. It should jump to six. And it does. And then it says it's jumping to two, which is right here. Uh, and then it adds R0 to R1, R0 to R2. And then it jumps to 12. Jumps here, R0 should contain five. R0 contains seven, it will. Oh, it contains 12. Wait, what's happening? Are we storing into, hmm, I think I see what's going on when we're jumping. See, we didn't store anything here, we just jumped. But it's storing in R0, the jump address, which is not what we want. Uh-huh. Okay, how do we fix that? Um, so we have an enable right here. I think what we need is a right reg here in our microcode. So I'm going to just add that. I've been kind of wanting this for a while anyway, because it makes some things a lot easier. We need to have it in here, I think. Oh, let's just call it right. So we write when both of these are true. Uh, we probably need more room than that. Uh, 
and not quite I'm sticking that and I'll do this. Okay, so it's calculating nine. That should not go into R0, and it does not. Uh, moving three into R1 should modify R1, and it does. Okay, we are modifying R0, so that's good. And we're jumping to 12. There, five. We skip the error now, and we help. Awesome, okay. Uh, unfortunately, I can't run the test suite without updating all of the tests, and that is a bit of a chore. But I think that's it for this episode. One nice thing about now having a register write is in the execute unit, we have this path right here. Well, that's for move. We have this right here for doing nothing, and I don't believe we need that anymore since we can just not write the result in that case. So we have an ALU op for compare that will now just go away because we just don't write. And in the case of a no op, we don't write either. So these two go away, freeing up some ALU ops for, I don't know, something. So we'll have two spare ALU ops from this. There's a bunch of different simplifications that can be done. I'm not gonna do those on camera. I will probably do those between episodes to simplify things. Actually, our Fibonacci program should run again. And make it. Awesome. Yep. Cool. So thank you very much for watching. I hope you have a great day. Bye.